your wife goes to the hairdresser and she says, oh, uh, Sammy or Tom or whatever his name is, Mr. Schmidt, whatever it may be, why don't you work on my hair? And you see the delight in the faces of these people. Imagine if everybody was this way. You wake up in the morning and you're the last heterosexual person left on the planet. This is an inevitability now. This is their plan. We have found writings of these people and they're planning to do this. They, they, they will come eventually door to door and they'll knock at your door and say, would you like to be a queer today? And if you say no, they'll, they'll knock again the next day. And this will go on and on and on. This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. God's elect know the time when judgment day is coming, but the unbelievers, they don't know the time. God has commanded us to warn them that the sword is coming. The whole world has to know that judgment day is near. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. We have to talk about this. This is not an option. But we have to say it again and again and again. Please go to FamilyRadio.com and click on How Do I Begin? Do yourself a favor. Take both hands off the wheel and touch the stereo. Do you feel the power? Ah, oh, yes, friend. There's a lot of evil in the world, but there is also light. And I have been sent to shine a light on all degenerates, philanderers, liberals, and other evildoers and expose them for what they really are. Don't waste your money on unnecessary and corrupting material possessions. Give it to me. There's only one thing that will save you. A highly fortified structure in the shape of the most powerful thing on the planet. Me. In my wonderful book, I tell of the impending disaster about to befall this planet. Nuclear holocaust, plagues of flying rodents, the seas rising up and turning yellow. It is coming. It is written by me. But you can save yourself. Contribute to the Pastor Richard Salvation Statue Fund. Pick up your telephone. Call now. 1-866-9-SAVE-ME. Welcome back to Family Talk Radio, 1041 AM, BASH. We're here talking today with Dr. Herr Hotzi, a preeminent doctor from the Houston area. Uh, today we're going to be talking about gender identity. Uh, Dr. Hotzi is somewhat controversial in the family values community uh, because he asserts that actually uh, these transgender people suffer from a physical malady located in their brain. And the doctor is here today to talk about how you can spot this physical issue within your own children and indeed how we as a society can um, identify these uh, broken individuals. So, doctor, thank you so much for taking your time to come out to Central Texas and be on Family Radio. Do you have any questions? Uh, please talk more about um, this, this physical issue. It's a great pleasure to be here, and I want to uh, thank you on behalf of the members of the Institute for Sexology and Unusual Behavior. But I, I tell you this, look, I want to be very serious now. We have a topic, very serious here, for all parents, all teachers, all ministers, all people to be on the lookout. Because if you take a look, we, you know, we do uh, what we call... Uh, CAT scans. Do you know what this is? Uh, the coaxial tomography scan. We put you inside a big donut. It's radiation. Some people are very freaked out by the fear of the enclosed spaces, but we like this. And we look at their brain, okay? What we try to do is get people in a state of homosexual excitedness. We make them think about uh, penises and behinds and leather chaps and, you know, putting on wigs and makeup. And then we look at your brain. And what do we see? We see the digital, uh, we call this the digital devil, yes, because we can see all sorts of titillation uh, lighting up your brain. This is where the, the metabolic activities are going on. We can see the nipples rising and things like this and other things. This is what we have discovered. 
within the brain there's this TG position. It's very small, very delicate, and we have found this uh, structure within the brain. We can locate this and we can digitally map this position within the brain. So, uh, what is to be done? Anytime you must discuss this, especially your sons. How are school today? How are your little playmates today? Are you a bit queer? And if they make their eyes move in a particular dimension, this is called accessing clues. It's high science. This is scientific information. We say to them, you must stop this right now. And often you must strike them rather in a theatrical way, okay? So in other words, don't beat them with a baseball bat or heat up a branding iron or hot poker, but you must link up in their mind, this is a very bad thing to be doing here, all right? And um, this is the first topic. You, you must take control. Control is very important. You must have an iron will, and you must not back off. Do you understand these things? So we are proposing to scan each brain. It must be done. You understand? When you go to the airport now, they make you take off your pants and your shoes, they look under your armpits, they look in your loins, and they say, look, maybe I find a bomb or an ICBM or something. You know, what do you have hiding up there? And they even discover some people have more than two or three orifices in their body. There are people with five or six, ten or fifteen, you never know. So what we must do is begin scanning, and we must begin in the early ages. That's like scanning, and scanning sometimes for some people on a daily basis for a while. If we cook the brain, it's no problem. At least the patient is saved. So we want to have the names of anyone within your high school, junior high, your church group, who is a little strange in how they're sitting, how they're walking, for example. When my wife and I, we go to the church faithfully, we notice any men who cross their legs in an unusual manner. And we say to them, why don't you come over after church and we'll talk. Then we scan their brains. This is done. We have a small scanner in the house. It's above the toilet, so when they're standing there, we're scanning them. And we can see these structures within. This is one of the major problems in this country here. So once you find these structures in the brain, what can be done, doctor? Most severe cases, for example, it, let's say it begins with unusual techniques of sitting and speaking in a strange manner. Maybe uh, boys will have their interests skew away from baseball and uh, brutality, football and militarism, and they'll say, gee, perhaps, mother, I would like to assist you baking cookies today. This is a clear sign. There's, this is what they call an ir irrefutable fact. So the first thing to be done is, is discuss it with the child. You say, you're acting very unusually. And if they say, what do you mean? You say, you know what I mean. And stare right back at them. They say, I don't know what you mean. You stare back and say, yes, you do know what I mean. This may go on for weeks, months, even decades. But you must remain firm. Next, do a very clever trick. You can show them a picture of somebody who's TG'd or that GLBT stuff in a magazine, like Michael Jackson or someone like this, right? Time magazine. Then you put their hand in the microwave oven. You push that little lever and you turn it on. Just defrost a little bit. And you say, do you feel yourself heating up? Yeah, it's painful, isn't it? And then just, like this is called aversion therapy. If it doesn't work, maybe you accidentally back your SUV over them a couple of times. All the time, crying out, look what those queers are doing to our country. Are you clear about this? It's a little more pain. You ratchet the pain up a little bit, a little more. Maybe someone accidentally falls down the stairs or gets the equipment stuck in the door jam or something like that. Of course, the operative word is love with deniability. I love you, but I'm going to smack you until you cry, until you change. With enough pain, all of God's love is possible. This you know. If it doesn't hurt, it's not love. What's this I found under your bed? The only Engels you're going to read is Laura Engels Wilder. If you think your child might be a red, here are some warning signs. They read complicated literature and have concern for their fellow man. They even like to share. Tell your kids if someone approaches them with pamphlets about recycling, an invitation to a labor rally, or showing any doubts about the fairness of our system, then they should find a teacher or a policeman immediately. If we change the definition of marriage... Grandma, my teacher said if Grandpa was a girl, that's okay. You can still be married. Our kids will be taught a new way of thinking. God creating Adam and Eve? That was so old-fashioned. And soon, they'll be thinking the unthinkable. If my dad married a man, who would be my mom? This is an urgent marriage alert. 
New Hampshire legislators are pushing a same-sex marriage bill now. These are the same politicians who don't have time to fix our state's economic mess, balance our budget, or restrain out-of-control spending. But they have time to mess with gay marriage? If you're outraged by legislators who can't keep their priorities straight, go to nationformarriage.org. That's nationformarriage.org. Tell the politicians to stop messing with marriage and get back to work. I want a mommy and a daddy. Paid for by nationformarriage.org. This is the problem here. We need discipline. Surgery is often indicated. We can cut out these brain centers if we must. We must drill holes to people's heads and have a look. Fortunately, the average hardware store has this equipment available. Get a good power drill and maybe some sort of a powerful lamp. You can take a look inside your, your youngster's brain and you can look for the epicenters of this activity. Have these guys and they act so gay and you, you know they they got the little limp wrist going and they're girly and they're real sensitive and, and they're a wimp and a pansy. Look, it's an abomination, my friend. God said if you wear a woman's clothes, you're an abomination. God says if a, if a woman wears a man's clothes, it's an abomination. God says here, effeminacy is wrong. It's an abomination. You say, oh man, I can't take this hard preaching, Pastor Anderson. That's because you're being preached to by a man. raise a bunch of little sissies and queers in the back there. I'm going to raise some manly men who know how to get up and work hard and don't be an effeminate queer little sissy. 20-year-old Jones was charged with grabbing his girlfriend's 17-month-old baby by the neck and then punching him to death. The motive here, according to the felony complaint, Pedro Jones told state police that he was trying to get the child to act like a boy instead of a little girl.